In this video demo, we're going to talk about override control. So let's take our simple stirred tank reactor. We've talked about doing flow control and talked about doing uh, level control in a cascade arrangement where the level controller writes out to the flow set point. In this case, we're going to talk about what, what if we wanted to control a couple of different things. So let's assume that we can control flow directly in this example. So we have our flow coming in, but let's suppose that we want to control a couple of different things. Let's say we want to control the level. So we measure our level with a level transmitter, and then we have a level controller. And we could actually set up this level controller to write to this valve directly. In this example, we're going to assume that we just change the flow directly instead of having to do that cascade arrangement. And let's also suppose that we have the reaction going on here, so we have A to B, and let's suppose that we have, we discover that there's a significant impact on the concentration of product B in the tank and in the outlet with flow. So there's a, a significant relationship with flow in to the concentration of B coming out. So let's suppose we wanted to use that same flow rate to control our concentration coming out. So in that case, we'd need a concentration transmitter. So this would measure the concentration of, of our product, B. And let's say we wanted to use that in a control scheme. So we create a concentration controller. And it's al it also wants to use flow rate as its manipulated variable. So you can see the issue here. We have two things that we want to control, but we only have one manipulated variable here. So we have one MV, and we have two CVs. So a CV is a controlled variable, and an MV is a manipulated variable. So you can see this is a problem. So let's suppose that perhaps controlling the concentration is more important to us. We're in a chemical plant, and we're producing some product and we really care about the purity of our product more so than we care about maintaining a specific level in this tank. But let's also suppose that at some point if we put in too much flow at some point this tank is going to overflow and we want to prevent that. So what we can do is we can create a, an override control scheme where normally the concentration controller is in control and regulating the concentration but if we get to a point where our level rises to where it's close to overflowing, then we can set up some logic that this level controller then takes over and overrides the concentration controller. So the way to do that is to introduce an intermediate logic block called a low value selector. So we can have our concentration controller going to this low value selector and our level controller going to this low value selector and the low value selector is just that. It compares these two signals and it picks whichever one is lower and then it writes out that value to our flow rate. So how would we integrate this, implement this in Simulink? So I've got this set up. I'm using actually a different model here than I've used in previous examples. So you can see we have inlet flow is our, is our only input in this model and our outputs are the tank level and the product concentration. So I've gone ahead and created PID loops for each of those. So I tuned them each individually using those IMC tuning relations. And those are actually both PI controllers, no derivative action. But you can see I haven't actually connected either of those controllers. First, I wanted to demonstrate this um, model in open loop. So I'm just changing the flow directly. I'm making a step change at time t equals 120 minutes. And I'm going from an initial flow rate of 5 cubic meters per minute to 8 cubic meters per minute at that time. Then my simulation runs out to 240 minutes. And I just want to, to demonstrate the, the open loop step response on our level and on our product concentration. So you can see, ignore the yellow line. Um, you can see the level reaches just over 6. And then once we make our step change, the level is reaching over 10 now. And our product concentration has a, a similar effect. You can see that we're getting to a concentration, not quite to steady state yet, but we're getting approaching four and a half there. 
and once we reach our new steady state, um, we're getting to about 4.8. So there's a small relationship here on product concentration to flow. So we could set each of these controllers up. I'll connect my product concentration controller. And here I'm making a step change. I'm controlling it from 4.5 to 5. Let's just see how well this controller works. So you can see it, it controls pretty well. And it, as you notice, it speeds up the response. We reach a steady state faster because we're in control. My level set point, I'm going to go from, I'm going to control it from 6 to 8. So now I need to disconnect this controller. Remember, only one can be in control at a time. So I'll disconnect this controller. And now we're going to do level control. So I didn't show the step that was tuning these controllers, but that has happened in the background. I mean, that has happened before this demonstration. So what I'd like you to retain here is that you need to tune each of these controllers as if it were going to be in control the whole time. So you can see um, we're controlling the level to 6, and then we make a step change at time t equals 60, and then we control to 8. So each of these controllers works quite well on its own. But again, we wanted to have a scheme set up where we can have them both in control, and our level controller will only kick on in the event that the tank approaches its overflow condition. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect a couple of blocks. So Simulink has a built-in block called this uh, min-max block, and I've set it to min. So it's going to, what we're going to do is we're going to take each of these controller signals and connect them here in this mux block. So this mux block takes two scalar variables and combines them into a vector. So this vector, um, this, this line here actually represents two values that would be stacked on top of each other in a vector. And we could see what those look like by choosing a sync and picking a display. So if we go here and connect this display, we can just demonstrate that that there's a vector. It's going to be a two by one um, column vector. So what our control scheme now does is it has a controller here that's trying to control the level. It has a separate controller here that's trying to control the concentration. And then we've added this low value selector here that's going to pick the lower of those two signals. So if the concentration controller starts calling for flow rates that are too high, ultimately this level controller will kick in and it will override to prevent our tank from overflowing. So let's say that our tank overflows at a height of 10 meters. So let's set our let's set our level controller to be 8 meters. So when we start to get flows over 8 meters, I mean to get levels over 8 meters, then this level controller will kick in and will reduce the flow, which means that our concentration controller will no longer be working. I'm going to go ahead and connect our set points here to these different blocks to help with the demonstration. So let's make a concentration set point change. So remember we've got our our level set point is going to be at a constant 8. Anything over 8 meters and that controller will eventually kick in in override control and will keep our level down, which means that our concentration controller will no longer be reaching its set point. So let's go from a concentration of 4 to a concentration of 6. And let's also observe what our actual flow rate does. Let's look at the two different flow rates um, with time. So I'll go ahead and simulate. Okay, so let's look at our concentration controller. So as you can see, it maintains the set point of 4 um, perfectly. Then when we make this set point change and try to go to 6, that controller initially responds, but it ends up calling for flows that are too high. That controller uh, keeps wanting to get higher and higher flows to reach that concentration, but our level controller steps in and, and overrides it and um, tries to bring the level back down to prevent the tank from overflowing. So you can see the two flow rates that we're calling for. So our level controller is calling for higher and higher flow rates because um, it's trying to reach that level. And then ultimately, when once our s flow increases, the level controller says, hey, we need to back off the flow to bring our level back down, whereas the concentration controller keeps on asking for more. So that low value selector will pick whichever of these two signals is lower.
So let's look at how our level controller does. So you can see our level controller, oh, I guess we actually had that step change in there. Our level controller is trying to control, but it's the higher of the two signals, so it's not in control. But then once we make that concentration uh, set point change, our level controller kicks in and it brings the level back down to eight. So you can see um, these two controllers can can work together. We have two things that we're trying to control, but only one manipulated variable. So we need to choose a control scheme that uh, that lets lets our system pick one or the other controller. And if you did notice, this is not very good control. Uh, it takes this level controller a really long time to respond here, and it takes a really long time for that level to come back down. And if our tank actually did overflow at 10 meters, you could see, well, we've gone way above that before our controller actually responds. So there's another issue here that we need to, to address, and that issue, again, is um, integral wind-up or reset wind-up. It's the same issue that we had in a previous example with the when we were doing flow control. Once the valve reaches 100%, that controller can't do anything any longer. It, it's already called for 100% of the flow that it can achieve. So if you can't reach a set point and your valve is saturated, the integrator keeps on integrating. And so we address that by introducing an anti-windup control method. And we'll have to do the same thing here, but we'll have to be a little bit more creative about it. So the level controller, you can see it's not in control. So the level controller itself, it can't do anything. It keeps on calling for, for flow, but the concentration controller is producing the lower value, so its integral keeps on winding up. So when we switch over to the point where we need level control, that level control still has this really high integral built up, and it's got to unwind before it actually becomes an effective controller again. So in our next video demonstration, we'll deal with how do we handle reset windup in an override control scheme? And we'll have to use some smarter logic in order to implement something like that.